Hello everyone, Brett back high altitude scale modeling with this brand new Great Wall Hobby SU35S Flanker E multi roll fighter. This is the special bonus canopy limited edition 2999 issued. I got one. And it comes with some PE, some decals. They look like they're made in China. Uh, let's see. Let's see how many pieces are there. Let's check this side. Three schemes on this side. Blue 24, red 25, red 06. Good looking box art as usual from Grey Wall Hobby. Let's open her up. If you're interested in seeing a build review of this kit, Doug's Models is building it and comparing it to, I'm pretty sure, the Kitty Hawk SU35. So go over to Doug's channel, check out his side by side build comparison. I'll do a side by side sprue comparison in the coming weeks. So, let's start right here. Look at that beautiful Great Wall Hobby plastic. Protected, resealable bags. Take the clear parts out. This is going to be fun to put back in the bag, that's for sure. Alright, they're protecting this really well. So we've got a top and a bottom. Top's got this here, protecting that. A little aerial. Wow. You know how nice that is. I did review the SU-35 from Kitty Hawk, and I remember it had some good detail too. But until we do the side-by-side, -side, we won't know for sure. Inside detail on the bay doors. And on those bay doors. Single piece canards, single piece, looks like flaps, and the detail on those is also quite remarkable. It's been a while since Grey Wall Hobby's put out an aircraft, as far as I can recall. Check out the detail on that. And I've never been disappointed in one of their kits. Look, there's no ejector pin marks anywhere that could be in the way. There's the connection points. There's no sink marks. Some more nice detail right up here, where you connect the canopy and the front windscreen. But, very nice. Very nice indeed. Been waiting for a Great Wall Hobby to come out with another kit. And now they have done it and so far not disappointed. Look at the bottom of that. What a massive aircraft this is. 48 scale, look at the size of it. Inside, again. No ejector pins anywhere, they're all flush. The ones we have, they're not sticking up anywhere. There's some holes you'll need to drill for pylons, it looks like. You've got one piece elevators, pretty much one piece tails. You won't have to worry about a seam edge because this part is going to go into that part. And then those look like the one piece rudders. Just look at the detail on that. That is just nice. And then on this side. Very good. Let's look back over here to the other side of the tail fins. And the rudders. Look at the tiny little rivet detail on those rudders. Sweet. And such nice plastic. Here you have to be careful. And they did it by the way they molded it. They put this here to protect the little static dischargers. 
but there's no even flash on those. But be careful when you're putting it together. Same here, lots of tiny little detail on the end of the tail. Wow. <clears throat> Going here, there's put those four screws in this bag. So it's a shame they're not bagging things separately anymore, but I'm sure cost effective reasons for that. And actually, if you hear, this one is bagged separate. Let's start with these beautiful one piece intakes, shall we? No need for replacement intakes, no need for resin intakes. Look at the detail. Inside, no ejector pin marks. You can put FOD covers in there if you want. And just, just look at it. Straight. The tips are as pointy and sharp as they should be. Wow. Get all around there. They're just doing such a good job. Let's, let's zoom in here. Give you a better look at all that detail in there. On there. The vent openings. Nice raised and recessed detail. And we've got us um, exhaust nozzles. Molded in their own little sprues so they won't get damaged and they'll be done just right. Again, wonderful detail. Perfectly round. Interesting to see if they make it so you can droop the nozzles like it should be. Here's the pylons, here's the vents, open and closed, afterburner ring, intake ring, multi piece exhaust turkey feathers, as sometimes they're called, single piece pylons, but look at the open one there. Completely open, no flash in between those grates. Beautiful afterburner ring. Beautiful intake nozzles. Detail on those parts of the exhaust. And on the pylons, even on the closed vent. Sublime. Very. Oh, look at there. Get inside there. That detail inside that engine right there. So nice. Uh, this one is a matching sprue, so you've got two of the same, of course, because you have two engines. The pylons are the same on both. So be careful with those delicate parts on it and this one that was bagged inside of it wow this is what I got to say about that wow you've got hosing and piping that is so finely detailed you've got seat backs seat back where to go right there cushion on the seat back here let's do this bring this in get all those little parts the detailing on the piping and the hosing the um, open sorry 
open ridges on the uh, front wheel guard right there. And just the connections on the hoses is so fine, so well crafted on all of these little parts. All right. This has got leading edge slats. More intake parts than those cone. Leading edge slats. These go into there. You might need a little bit of a sand down to make sure that those ejector pins are flat, but they look okay. More into the intakes, the tops, or the bottoms. But look at the detail right there. No, no detail is missed. On these. Sides of the fuselage. No details missed. Even in there. Get inside of there. The nose cone. Perfectly straight, perfectly beautiful. Ready to take some weight. Yeah. I'm not even sure what that's for, but it looks great. And the last big sprue of aircraft parts. These bags. I mean, look at how the bags are even put together. Yeah. Nice thick heavy duty bags that are reinforced. Weight on wheels, yes. Single molded wheels, yes. Cockpit, back of the ejection seat, landing gear struts, on the canopy, there is no seam line or no burring on those landing gear struts, the main ones, not on the front one either, the weight on wheels, one piece with tread, there's even some wording on it. I have to get out my magnifier to read it, but even the front wheels, weight on wheels, one piece. So you can paint those all up, then paint the hubs, which have excellent braking detail. And here's what I was saying, there is no burring, as far as I can tell, in the main landing gear parts. There's, come on, come on, where you at? There you go. Cockpit, almost no need for an Edward set. Side of the ejector seat, back of the ejector seat, sides of the cockpit, there's the instrument panel, there's the seat cushion, upper parts of the main landing gear bays, struts for the landing gear, hubs for the front wheels, which are double sided, the back of the where the canopy goes. This is actually attaches to the canopy. This attaches to the fuselage. Look at the detail on that. Framing and everything. Oops. Now, not sure what this part's for. Looks like a blank instrument panel, but I don't think it is. But look at that detail. All around through here. Pause it as you need to. There those hose right there. Not sure what they're for right now, but they're one piece and they're detailed on both sides. Very lovely. The ejector handles for the ejection seat. Control stick. 
or tiny little details. Pretty sure those go in the ejector seat. Wow. Weapons. As we all know, Great Wall Hobby takes great pride in their weapons. There you go. Twelve weapons. Fully and completely put together. I'm only going to open one of them. Right there. Look at that rocket. Depth inside of there. This one. With the blades out. Wow. They can just keep impressing Great Wall Hobby does. They take their time to build the kits. Here's the two canopies. The tinted one and the clear one. There is a center seam. You can see that. There is a center seam. But they're very clear. No distortion. The other one, it's going to look just the same, only it's going to be clear. It's nice that they give you the option. It's nice they take the time to actually tint a canopy. Okay. We got instructions, we got call outs, we got stencil guide. Yes, in decals and photo etch. Decals. I don't see the photo etch anywhere. So, Steam, Red 25, Blue 24, Red 06. Usual blue scheme of the Russian military. This one's blue 24 is here of the Soviet Union, red 25 is actually the same pilot, different aircraft. And of course, the great big Russian stencil layout. Both sides, plus these could be suitable for some good looking framing. Good heavy stock. Don't see the photo edge anywhere. Let's. There it is. In with the decals. And it's just a little bit of photo edge, nothing. Nothing too fancy. A few covers. A few hooks. Not much. There's the stencil data, the weapon data. Oh, I like that for the radar. Research by Mr. Gabor. I've never seen that before. Made in China by Grey Wall Hobby. Grey Wall Hobby decals are always good as far as I know. All right, instructions. Typical, beautifully nice, great little hobby instructions. A little bit about the aircraft. Sprue map. It's kind of all in pieces, though. There is a correction sheet. Step one, step 11, step 18, step 11 again. Same thing on both sides. So you got a correction sheet because we made a mistake. Well, let me figure out. There we go. This is all weird. Step one, ejector seat, cockpit. It looks like it's got decals for the instruments being on. Yes. Which of course doesn't make any sense because it's on the ground unless you put a pilot in and they didn't include a pilot. But look at the detail on that ejector seat. Very nice. 
flip it over for part two inserting the cockpit in and all the other parts radar dish cut this part out for red 6, red 24 4 is continued with landing gear bays. That was 4, right? Yep, 4, 4, 5, putting the fuselage halves together. 6, the intakes. 7, parts. That takes care of this section. 8, more parts going onto the fuselage. Then the intake's going on the fuselage. Nine ailerons, ten engines. Closed and open. Just like they are on the ground, except I don't see that it's drooping. Eleven, tail fins, elevators. Twelve, there you go. You can have them drooping in, just like you should be. Nice touch. It even shows the angles, 8 degree angles, 12.7 degree angles. Very nice. This is not part of the plane. This is a template for assist assembling the formation lights. Nice they put that in there. Landing gear, which you can put on at the end, so you can paint it all up first. These are like CAD drawing directions. That ends on 13. Then we're going to blow this out of the way. 14, assembling more of the cockpit, the canopy, the front windscreen, putting the canopy on top of the framing with all the wiring. It's one of those kits you probably don't need much Edward stuff unless you want to. Rockets onto the pylons, pylons onto the wings, all the stencils that go on the rockets and the painting guides. Make this a beautifully well armed aircraft. And that's it. 1718. That's the end. There you have it. Let's bring out this nice color picture here. There we go. Great Wall Hobby. 148 scale SU-33S. A beautiful looking aircraft. Just like the MiG-29, the SU-27, SU-34, Russia makes some great aircraft. So, thanks for watching. Like I said, Duke has got a build video of this going on. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of sprues in the next day or two to compare it directly with detail to the Kitty Hawk kit. And I thank you for watching, and you all have a great day.